This is another marvelous video. I'm Grayson Ottaway. Whenever we talk about great CGI mastery, District 9 is mostly the first to come to our minds. It is science fiction that follows a marginalized emotional depth with realistic symbolism. Directed by Neil Blomkamp, the film takes us through amazing effect work and thrilling action. Despite a relatively small cast, it stood out very well, making it quite a hit at the box office. The gross and violent elements got the film an R rating though. The film features some stranded aliens who try to find shelter on Earth and get in conflict with humans. The aliens actually represent the group of inhabitants of South Africa who were forcefully relocated. The film touched the hearts of many due to its unique storyline and its amazing visual representation of the ideas. So when Blomkamp confirmed the most awaited sequel named District 10 after 13 years, we fans could barely keep our calm. So what really is the plot and who are we expecting to see in the new one? In today's video, we will be exploring it all. So let's go. Before we get going though, a little request. If you like our content, please click the subscribe to this channel. It means so very much to us. Here we go. What was District 9 all about? Released in 2009, the film District 9 was a blockbuster hit and critics applauded the movie's presentation. It is one of the greatest works of science fiction that was directed and written by Neil Blomkamp with Peter Jackson and Caroline Cunningham as production partners. District 9's concept was adapted from a short film Alive in Joburg, which was released in 2006. This inspiration was also Blomkamp's work. So what was the movie about? Well, it's not the first time we're seeing aliens on Earth, but only this time, the visitors from space actually look like a mix of lobsters and grasshoppers. In a desperate attempt to relocate and find shelter on Earth, the starving aliens arrived on the planet in a hovering spaceship. They are nicknamed as prawns, and for obvious reasons, humans are terrified of them, and I don't blame them. If a gang of lobsters landed from a spaceship and started walking, I would be absolutely losing it too. But without any empathy, the prawns were forced to be resettled. The mission was to move them with a strong and heavily guarded security force that ensured the safety of the humans. Weakus van der Merwe was an official who was appointed to lead the task, but he chose the worst possible way to deal with the situation. Not only did he cheerfully destroy their living places, but he also used flamethrowers to escalate the matter to chaos. The aliens, though, didn't make a very good impression either. By appearance, they are filthy and disgusting, and their behavior isn't a treat for the eyes. So to humans, they failed to evoke even the littlest of sympathy. Along with many other things, District 9 successfully delivers the idea that not everyone who comes down from a spaceship will be strikingly handsome and made of steel. The ruthless treatment towards refugees is also an important part of the mockumentary. Merwi got infected by some alien virus and was slowly transforming into a lobster. He grew lobster claws and hid in District 9. The weapons that the alien possess are also explored by the same security, which is portrayed in most of the plot. They are much more technologically advanced and superior in comparison to human weaponry, but they don't really use them to the fullest extent as a defense. These, however, are not something that humans can operate, so you can see where this is going. Yes, Merwi's lobster lobster claws allow him to use them, the Nigerian gangsters and security company actually end up bribing the aliens in order to exploit them. But what can you even bribe aliens with, you ask? Cat food? That's right. The movie, however, showcases these scenes on a very serious note. The South African theme of the film brings out racial exclusion, such as moving the race to a remote area. District 9 also resembles District 6 of Cape Town. We are all aware of the historical aspects of this residential area and how over 60,000 inhabitants were forced to leave in the 70s. The people's houses and businesses were bulldozed and they were forcibly removed from the area, much like the prawns in the movie.
The climax of District 9 has enough room for a sequel? District 9 challenged the entire sci-fi genre, and the genre enthusiasts cheered on as it became one of the best politically driven science fiction action movies. There have not been a few movies where an alien race arrives on another planet and is immediately categorized and treated as second-class citizens, even though they have much more advanced technology. Many theories have been speculated, while fans eagerly await to the much-needed sequel, District 10, announced by director Neil Blomkamp. Let's dig in for clues and the missing pieces in the original to understand where it might pick up from. Blomkamp did an excellent job with his debut film, creating a mockumentary on the struggle prawns go through in their interactions with humanity. It makes perfect sense that it is a direct allegory to what marginalised groups that went through in South Africa during apartheid when the whites started to to force their way in. District 9 ended with the mothership leaving Earth with Christopher, our prawn ally, in it. But does it have to end there? Christopher left in quite a hurry, leaving most of his kind behind for unknown reasons. Will he come back for them? Or will they have to fend for themselves again and live the same struggle in the future? We also see our main character, Weakus, gradually turning into a prawn and the gradual change in his attitude towards circumstances as he slowly becomes an alien, he keeps becoming more human. It is quite a marvellous sight to experience. The end credits of District 9 show a text on the screen that states that the alien population has now reached 2.5 million and continues to grow. It is safe to assume that the sequel will still have the same premise. Malnourished aliens living in slum-like conditions wronged for things that are out of their control. It also shows a now fully transformed formed Weakus, crafting a metal flower for his wife in the junkyard, showing that his appearance doesn't determine the intensity with which he can feel human emotions. Multiple blanks as such need to be filled in for a satisfying sequel. One we are yet to learn is about the planet that the prawns initially belong to, except for the fact that it has seven moons and is several times larger than Earth, we wonder why prawns are reduced to the state that they are living in here. But exploring that would take the movie's direction away from the political commentary it makes, so we have to see what Blomkamp has planned out for the sequel. Two, we will get to see more of how the aliens fear when there's a possibility that help is arriving. The way they used to live, where humans stand in the face of cosmic possibilities and the introduction of new species and characters are all unknown now. Knowing how District 9 panned out, we might see more of human violence and the effects of corruption towards the aliens instead. And either way, it just keeps getting more and more interesting. Everything you need to know about District 10. When will the movie release? District 9 made many political statements and pointed out socio-political issues that happened in South Africa during apartheid, earning four Oscar nominations, including Best Film and Best Adapted Screenplay in 2010. It took sci-fi to a whole other level. The graphics used in the movie still look valid to this day, and the political commentary is excellent food for thought. Fans were eagerly awaiting the sequel when Blomkamp said that it would be released two years after the original but there has been pin drop silence from his side for nearly 12 years, except for tidbits about it being in development. So what happened? Last year, things became more proper since Blomkamp and Terry Tatchell, co-writer and wife, announced that they had begun writing down the script for District 10. He said that the budget would be just as bare and stripped down as the original and wanted it to be as realistically minimalist as possible in an interview where he was promoting his horror movie demonic. But when asked by Radio Times, Shalto Copley had other things to say. He stated that the director was playing around with the public and nothing had been fixed yet. The audience might have to wait two years or more for the production to begin because Blomkamp is busy with his new movie. He joked that what does two more years matter when 12 have already passed? And we have to agree with that. Apparently Copley dropped a hint about what the sequel might be about when he mentioned that the director 
director was waiting for the right time to talk about the socio-political situation in American history, people speculated that it might be related to America's racial history. But with that issue still ongoing, when is the timing supposed to be right? Blomkamp, who holds Canadian citizenship, states that it was not the right time for an outsider like him to talk about US affairs, so there are only two more years of waiting before we hear anything about the sequel being in the works. Hoping that we get updates in the right direction and get to see teasers or tidbits about the sequel very soon. District 9 generated $210,819,611 against a very low budget of just $30 million and the film made revenue of $67 million. The unusual marketing campaigns that went around the movie were actually pretty effective. Various modes of transportation such as buses, trains and even billboards had a toll-free number written to report any alien-like activities that revolved around the movie plot. This encouraged many people to call the number and be made aware of the movie's release. Surprisingly, this worked. Science fiction fans also got pretty excited as District 9's marketing effort reached Comic-Con San Diego and Sony 2 ran ads about the film through various media platforms. Overall, the film flourished and we, sci-fi fans, fans still love it to the very core. So, what the long-planned sequel, District 10, has to offer will keep us awake at night. And that, friends, is the end of this video. If you like our content, please don't forget to leave a like, and please leave a comment below about District 10, and do subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and please be safe.